Hi, I'm Jason Ivey, and we're here at Occupy Wall Street. It's Saturday, October 22nd, 4 p.m. We're here to talk to the protesters. We're going to find out who they are, what their views on capitalism are, their views on socialism. Um, it's a Harry Potter reference. House elves are slaves that have to do, like, literally everything their masters tell them, and if they go against their masters, they have to punish themselves. And that's the relationship our government has with big corporations. So you want to get the government out of... Uh, private industry, is that right? Other way, other way around. I want to get private industry out of our government. No more of their money in our politics. The goals of the Tea Party and the Occupy Wall Street movements are really at their heart. If you cut through the rhetoric, they're really the same. So what I'm trying to send is if we can get behind the issue of the Fed, the Federal Reserve is a private bank. It's the way that Wall Street controls the government. Uh, it's, it's actually two sections. There's the private bank, which is the Federal Reserve System, and then there's the regulatory agency, which is the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. So the Board of Governors is supposed to regulate the banking system. They stack it with executives from the member banks. So they don't actually regulate themselves, they regulate the 99%. They regulate their uh, competition. So Goldman Sachs and, JP and uh, Chase deny Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers bailout money. They use their, their political influence to put their competition out of business. Uh, and, and they regulate the rest of the economy, uh, but they never actually regulate themselves. So do you think that all people that make up the 1% are, are they bad people? No, not at all. I, I think individually, uh, it almost doesn't matter. I think many of them are people of conscience or good people. They may even uh, care about uh, social justice or the environment. And given their massive amount of resources, they may even dedicate uh, some percentage of that towards those goals. But individually, it doesn't matter. Institutionally, uh, it's monstrous and it's destroying this country and the planet. So, so you're not sudden. against, say, individual entrepreneurs? No, not at all. Getting rich, getting wealth, no. you're against. I'm not, no, I'm not against uh, corporations or capitalism in the abstract. What is it you're against? What I'm against is a, uh, sort of a, the sort of corporate capitalism as it's currently practiced in this country. Uh, and, tip, you know, exemplified specifically by the financial institutions and banks in this country have gotten completely out of hand. They're corrupt. They're fraudulent. They're felons. They've looted the American economy to the tune of several trillion dollars, and they should be prosecuted. What percentage of the federal budget consists of military spending? You can see it right here, 60%. It's I don't think huge. That's true. It, it is true. The percentage of the federal budget is in the 20s. It's about 23%. Well, that's because you've included the uh, Social Security. If you take oh, the, sure, yeah. yeah, the Social Security, you put it in, take it out for Social Security. Well, Social Security and military spending, how, how do they This relate? is the discretionary budget. This is our taxpayer right. dollars, and we're spending but, oh, well over half of them on, mil on the military. That's purely discretionary discretionary spending. Right. That's that's the way it should be. The right. Social Security, we pay it in in order to get it out later. It's not to You're pay not it in. It because we're, we're not paying it in to spend it on, on the military or anything else. So, but I think you're wanting to count that as a separate budget. Of course, it is. But I don't think our federal government counts it as a separate No, because they don't budget. want it to look as if we're spending this enormous amount on the military. They want to hide that behind the Social Security. But the Fed has played a role in stabilizing the currency over the years? No, they have played a role in destabilizing, intentionally destabilizing the currency, absolutely. Why were they intentionally destabilizing? Because Wall, the top 1% of Wall Street makes money whether you're an up or down uh, market. They don't care about market cycles. They create the market cycles. But what they do is during down cycles, they suck the wealth out of the out of the uh, middle class through bailouts. Uh, all, all year, all through, no matter what cycle it is, they're sucking wealth out through crony, crony capitalism, through contracts, sweetheart deals, $500 hammers, etc. And then during down markets, they can get bailouts and subsidies and tax credits and, and all that. They're, they use the Federal Reserve system to, to socialize loss, and, pro, and, and then they privatize their gains, sending it offshore. For me, um, the mere existence of a central bank suggests that government feels that it has the right to meddle in the market, that it has the right to pick winners and losers. Yeah, and I fundamentally believe in the capitalist system, um, except for the idea, I mean, it stops being capitalist once my tax dollars bail out a bank. 
the flip side of capitalism, the only thing that makes the market work is that if you take too much risk, you might get rich, but then if you fail, you fail. I believe in property rights. I believe in freedom and free will and free markets. But it seems to me like the banks have sort of had their cake and eaten it too in terms of picking the parts of capitalism they like and then picking the parts of socialism that they like. All right, and uh, why would you want to prosecute Benjamin Netanyahu? Um, at best, his monetary policy is inflationary. At worst, it may be hyperinflationary. We don't know yet. We haven't seen the full effects sort of unfold. And I would argue that weakening the dollar weakens the country. Weakening the country strengthens our enemies. And to me, that's close enough to be treason. And, um, what do you hope this movement will accomplish? Um, either massive, from the ground up, political reform or revolution. If uh, Andrew Jackson were alive today, would he be a Republican or a Democrat? Uh, I, the thing is, I don't even agree with that division, Republican or Democrat. If I had to pick the four or five politicians who I most support, we have Bernie Sanders, who's an independent. We have Ron Paul, who's a libertarian. You have uh, Alan Grayson, who is a Democrat. What ties them all together is that they are all fundamentally moral people who really, really care about their country. I mean, we've seen here in other cities a lot of the people, and we've seen some of the list of, lists of demands, and a lot of it is people asking for somebody else to pay for their stuff. They want free health care, they want free education, they want a living wage, they want a you know, a, a raised minimum wage and that kind of thing. So you're not seeing that here? I mean, yeah, no, I mean, like, yeah, a living wage, a free college free college tuition, I think is a great idea. Somebody but, like, the idea, the idea, oh, yeah, someone's got to pay for it, yeah. The 1% is going to pay for it. Or Why should the 1% pay for everybody else? Because they take, they're a part of this society, they exist in this society, and uh, they, they should pay their fair share. Look, 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 wait, wait a second. We're all paying for them. There, there has been no greater beneficiary in terms of the redistribution of wealth in this country over the last 30 years as the, you know, the, the, the incredibly wealthy. Where do you think wealth comes from? How does wealth get created? Wealth gets created uh, by a real economy, by, by the creation of goods and, and, and jobs that pay a wage where people can, yeah, like the, yeah by paying for, work, right? yeah, people who work to create, uh, you know, to create, like I said, a product or offer a service that people want or need. And, and that if that generates wealth, that grows the economy. Exactly. Why, are the, why should the people that are, say, starting businesses and creating things and producing things that other people want then have to pay for everybody else's education and health care? Why can't people I, I, pay I mean, for I, their I just, own services? I think that's that I think pay? that's a tautology. That's ridiculous. What everyone should just yeah, like just pay out of pocket. Like, oh, my house is on fire. Oh, better you know, well, better go run to the ATM. Like. But that's why you have insurance. That, well, that's exactly. We should have broad social insurance. Why should some people pay for everybody else? Because that is the definition of civilization, of a society. My opinion is this. You hear on the talk radio that they say that the 1% pay the majority of the taxes. And, 39% of all. Taxes. Okay. And 50% of the people don't pay no taxes at all. 47% pay no taxes. Okay. But now, is it 47% of the people that are working, the working poor? Okay? Now they're working for a corporation. Now, if the, if the owner of that corporation that they're working for is one of the 1% that's making millions of dollars, right, and he's complaining about why should I pay more on taxes, don't pay more on taxes. I'm not telling that 1% to pay more on taxes, but why don't you raise the wages of the people that are making your wealth so that they earn? What if he can't afford to stay in business by raising wages of people who work for him? Who should decide what he pays his employees? Well, I believe if, uh, if at the end of the year the wealthy is making millions of dollars in profit, I believe What's he... Wrong with that? That, that... There's nothing wrong with that as long as, as the people that, right, that work for him. If you can't make money, if you can't make money without exploiting people, you shouldn't be making money doing it's, it's, that. It's creating a business that in, entails creating jobs to produce something, mm -hmm. how is that exploiting people? It's not. I mean, no, no, I mean, it, let's, be, let's be specific here. In the abstract, it's not. In practice, for many people, it is. What is free energy? Free energy is basically, um, in a sense, it's like energy that is, um, I would say, like, 
that people can create themselves like in ways that people can like for example the bike that people can bike and create their own energy ways that people don't have to depend on oil on all that thing that to bring their energy ways that people from their own house can create energy for themselves would that be supplemental to our current uh, sources of energy or would it replace our current sources well i don't think we are ready to like have it fully supplement like take over the current energy but i feel like if people start finding about these uh different uh things that exist out there they can start using them to at least start covering a small portion of the energy they use so eventually like just slowly but surely people we can have the transition to have energy that doesn't harm our planet and is eco-friendly i i really do think that the distortion of our market right now in all kinds of ways with the trillion dollar subsidy that we pay you and i pay for these companies to have free energy and then we buy their shit yeah we pay through it in our taxes a trillion dollars worth that's a quarter of our gdp i think that we should stop paying taxes and these assholes who have made the screwed up economy that has gotten most of us homeless should start paying for their screw ups that's what a free that's what a real economy is when you screw up you go down and then we refine our process. So how did GE get away with paying zero taxes? Why were they allowed to not pay taxes? Because they hijacked our politics. If you have politicians who depend on essentially their, like the, the level of employment of the people who are in their town being such a short-term thing, like two years, they're going to artificially inflate the economy like crazy, like keeping companies that are failing afloat with subsidies that are being paid by us so we don't see it they just make it just a little a little hidden so that we keep buying into this failed broken system and it's been failed and broken since the 70s and now it's gotten so screwed up that everybody sees it and we start seeing the people who are at the top who've been doing it the whole time and now we're pissed and now we're making shit happen okay so you would be against for instance the, the government telling GE you don't have to pay any taxes as long as you continue to create this green technology that we're going to subsidize and promote you're against them. I think that I think that just I'm pretty hardcore when it comes to how a market should be run. Any kind of subsidy or any kind of uh, any kind of mandate by a government is highly inefficient. You just get inefficiency when you start subsidizing something. It's just like patting your back for doing something you've never done. Okay, so you're actually against subsidy in government intervention. Yep, I think that so people can do it. You refer to the free market or the market, and as you said, being controlled. Who do you see controlling the market? Politicians and the government and no, corporations. I mean, I mean, how would you like to see? It? Oh, um, I'd like to see extreme transparency, complete public ownership of how the companies are 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 transparently engaged. Um, I would like it to be an actually free market where there's really strong liquidity of assets and capital so that there's a large, very fast generation sort of gap between new companies and new industry. If I'm working for minimum wage, okay, and you're making millions off of, the, of, of my labor and the labor of everybody that works with me, you're exploding us. That's right, we're dating folks, we're dating, she's my girlfriend.